Our study today is entitled, The On-Time Messiah. Paul wrote about the coming of Jesus that God sent Jesus on time. In Galatians 4 and 4 we read, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son. Even the Lord Jesus, when he got baptized, talked about the concept of time being fulfilled. He said in Mark 1.15, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now the point I want to make is this. Only if there was a time prophecy given in the Old Testament about the coming of Jesus, it is only then it makes sense to say the time is fulfilled. Through angel Gabriel, God told Daniel the prophet the exact year when the Messiah would appear. This is one of the time prophecies in the Bible that has converted several thousands and thousands of skeptics and infidels into believing the Bible and Jesus Christ as the true Messiah. Gabriel told Daniel in Daniel 9.25, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. Angel Gabriel told Daniel that Messiah the Prince, that's another title for Jesus Christ, would appear at the completion of seven weeks and 62 weeks. From which event? From the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem. You've got to count seven weeks and 62 weeks. And that is 69 weeks. When Daniel received this vision, Jerusalem was in ruins and the temple was burnt. Though Daniel had a comfortable life in the royal courts of Babylon, being the most powerful man after the king, Daniel's heart and mind were in Jerusalem. He constantly prayed to God about this matter as we read in Daniel 9 verses 17 to 19. Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplication and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O my God, incline thine ear and hear Open thine eyes and behold our desolations and the city which is called by thy name. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon invaded Jerusalem with his armies three times. From history we know when this happened. First time in 605 BC when King Joachim was the king of Judah. And then he came the second time in 597 BC when King Jehochin was the king of Judah. These were ruling uh, the land of Judah on behalf of King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, who conquered them. And then in 586 BC, when King Zedekiah was the king of Judah, we see Nebuchadnezzar came the third time, the final time, and burned the city, including the temple of God. That was a terrible, sad incident in the history of the Jews. God promised to build again the city and the sanctuary. God would command another king to rebuild the city. And from that command to restore and build Jerusalem, uh, that would come. From there you've got to count the 69 weeks and then the Messiah would appear. The book of Ezra tells us three Persian kings issued decrees to build a temple and a city at three different points of time. The first one was Cyrus in 538 BC. You can read that in Ezra chapter 1 verses 1 to 4. And then several years later Darius 
in 520 BC issued a decree as well. We can see that in Ezra chapter 6, verses 1 to 12. The final decree came from Artaxerxes, king of Persia, in 457 BC. You can read that in Ezra 7, verses 12 to 26. Though all three decrees were about building, the decrees were not similar. God told Daniel the starting point of the prophecy would be from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem. Among the three decrees by the Persian kings, two were to build the temple, the sanctuary. Only one was to restore and build Jerusalem, the city. And this text tells us it is from the command to restore and build Jerusalem we have to start calculating. So we don't take the other two commands which were the decree given to build the temple. Let us look at the three decrees. Cyrus 538 BC. In Ezra 1 and verse 3 we read, Let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. So here you see, Cyrus' decree was only to build the house of the Lord. So that cannot be the decree. Hardly they began building the temple. There was opposition from the enemies of the Jews, the neighbors, and the work of the building of the house of God stopped, the Bible says in Ezra 4 and verse 24. And the work of the house of God, which is at Jerusalem, ceased, and it was discontinued until the second year of the reign of Darius, the king of Persia. Later, the Jews approached Darius and he gave the second decree. They told him that King Cyrus earlier gave a decree, but the enemy stopped it so they could not continue. So they pleaded with him to give another decree. He searched all the files and he found out indeed Cyrus gave a decree. So he gave another decree to continue to build the house of God. You can see that in Ezra chapter 6 and verse 8. Moreover, I issue a decree as to what you shall do for the elders of the Jews, of the Jews, for the building of this house of God. Again, this decree was not for the building of Jerusalem, the city, and restoring them to national statehood, but it was just for a particular cause, building of the house of God. So this too cannot be taken as the decree to start calculating the time prophecy given in Daniel chapter 9. The final decree came from King Artaxerxes in 457 BC. We read in Ezra 7 verse 21, And I, even I, Artaxerxes the king, do make a decree to all the treasurers which are beyond the river, that whatsoever Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of God of heaven, shall require of you, it be done speedily. Before this time, the temple was already built. So his decree was not to restore the temple anymore because that was done, but to restore the city of Jerusalem to national statehood. He gave them all financial help and to complete the building of the city itself. In verse 25, we see he gave permission for their own magistrates and judges to be appointed. Uh, Daniel Ezra 7.25 And you, Ezra, according to your God-given wisdom, set up magistrates and judges who may judge all the people who are in the region beyond the river, all such as know the laws of your God and teach those who do not know. Here you see, he's allowing them to have their own magistrates and judges. So he's setting up the civil government. And then he says, your the laws of your own God you must teach. So you have the religious and the civil government set up. Absolute freedom he has given the Jews. The magistrates were given power even to execute and to punish even with death. We see in Exodus, uh, sorry, Ezra 7.26, Whosoever will not observe the law of your God and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily on him, whether it be death or banishment or confiscation of goods or imprisonment. You know, at the decree of Artaxerxes, the nation Israel was restored both to civil and relig religious freedom. 
You know, when the Jews were under the Roman rule, they couldn't execute capital punishment to uh, their convicts. That is why the priests, when they condemned Jesus to death in their court in the Sanhedrin, they could not put him to death. They had to go to the Roman ruler, Pontius Pilate, to have him executed. But Artaxerxes, the Persian ruler, gave the Jewish magistrates full liberty even to execute someone to death. So they got complete freedom in that sense, civil and religious freedom, when Artaxerxes gave the decree. So... The commandment uh, we have to take is Artaxerxes' commandment to start our calculation of Daniel's time prophecy. And from there you, you calculate and the Messiah would appear, the Bible says. Now when did Artaxerxes give his command? Ezra has recorded that as well in Ezra 7, 6-8. This Ezra went up from Jerusalem and he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses which the Lord God of Israel had given and the king granted him all his requests according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. And then it continues, And there went up some of the children of Israel and of the priests and the Levites and the singers and the porters and the Nathanians unto Jerusalem when? In the seventh year of Artaxerxes the king. And he came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which is the seventh year of the king. So, it's the seventh year of King Artaxerxes the decree was given to restore and build Jerusalem. The Bible just says seventh year. We have to go to history to find out when was the seventh year of King Artaxerxes. The encyclopedia tells us Ezra thereby left Babylon in the first month of the seventh year, 457 BC of Artaxerxes' reign. I want to quote one more authentic source, the Fawcett's Bible Dictionary, to confirm the date because this is time prophecy. I quote, the seventh year of Artaxerxes Longimanus, 457 BC, Ezra going to Jerusalem, 457 BC. So there we have, from secular history and from Bible dictionary, the starting date is 457 BC. Please don't forget this year because this is so important as we go forward into the time prophecies. Now, in symbolic Bible prophecy, one day equals one year. Right in the first section of the Bible called the Law of Moses or the Pentateuch, this rule is stated. Numbers 14.34, 40 days, each day for a year, even 40 years. Now what is the context to this text? Uh, the, Moses sent 12 spies to the land of Canaan, the promised land, to just see how it was and to come and give a report. They took 40 days to spy the land and came back and 10 of them gave a bad report, only Joshua and Caleb, two of them gave a good report saying, we are able to go and conquer. But the others gave a bad report and the people believed the bad report that they cannot conquer the Canaanites and all the people of the land. And so God was so upset because of their negative report. And God said, you went for 40 days to search the land. Now I'm going to allow you to be here in the wilderness before you go to the land for 40 years. So in that context, God brought this prophecy, the symbolic uh, day for a year. 40 days each day for a year, even 40 years. And also in the book of Ezekiel, we see that is repeated. God says in Ezekiel 4 and verse 6, I have appointed thee each day for a year. Ezekiel lived during the time of Daniel the prophets. They were contemporaries. Ezekiel 4, if we see this rule is given a day for a year because Daniel was talking about prophecy. So through another prophet, God reminded each day for a year. Knowing the starting point of the prophecy to be 457 BC and also knowing one day is one year. Now let us go to our key text again. Daniel 9.25 Know therefore and understand that 
that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem, that's 457, until Messiah the Prince, that is the coming of Jesus, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. So we know 457 is the starting date and then you had 69 weeks who would come. Now we have to first convert the week into days. Uh, one week has seven days, so 69 weeks would be 69 into seven. That is 483 days. And remember one day equals one year. So 483 days becomes 483 days. Years And who would come after 483 years from the year 457? Messiah the Prince. What an amazing prophecy. God gave the very year when Messiah would arrive. You know, today we are in the year 2021. After one year, it will be 2022. For we count up in the AD period. But in the BC period, it was count down when you add the years. The starting period of the prophecy was 457. So the next year would be 456 and then 455. So if you add 483 years, you count down or minus 483 from that period of the starting point. So let's calculate. 457 is the starting point. So you minus, because it's BC, 483 years, you come to 26 AD. Now at this point, we need to remember another rule. Whenever you cross from BC to AD in the calendar, you need to keep in mind there is no zero year existing in the calendar. I want to quote from the encyclopedia about the zero year. It says year zero does not exist in the widely used Gregorian calendar or its predecessor, the Julian calendar. Under those systems, the year 1 BC is followed by 1 AD. AD. So whenever we cross from BC to AD, just remember add 1 in your calculation because of the absence of the zero year. When you use your calculator, the calculator has zero whenever you move from negative to positive, but the calendar did not have zero. So remember just put plus 1. Now we arrived at 26 AD and so what you got to do is just put plus one because you have crossed from BC to AD. That brings us to 27 AD. So who would appear in AD 27? Messiah the Prince, our Heavenly Father, who sent Angel Gabriel with a time prophecy to Prophet Daniel, was keeping count of the time. When the time was nearing its fulfillment, he sent Gabriel again to announce to Mary of the birth of the Savior. Apostle Paul understood that God was keeping time uh, when he wrote in Galatians 4 and verse 4, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son made of a woman. But Daniel's time prophecy was not about the birth of Jesus, it was about the baptism of Jesus when the father declared openly to everyone the arrival of his son on the world stage. Also, it was at this time the Holy Spirit came down in bodily shape for everyone to see that Jesus is the Messiah. And it's at this point of time he began his messianic ministry. Daniel wrote, from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince. Though Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit from birth, he was anointed by the Holy Spirit at baptism to begin his public ministry. And immediately after Jesus was baptized, people, people begin to say in John 1 41, we read, we have found the Messiah, the anointed one, because he was anointed at baptism. The Lord Jesus also drew attention of the people to the fulfillment of this prophecy. Immediately after he was baptized, as we saw, he went preaching everywhere saying that time is fulfilled. Beloved, Jesus was the on time Messiah. God cannot be uh, you know, more accurate than this. He is giving us the exact year when Jesus would arrive at the world scene and he did. History testifies to that. Amazing. The on time Messiah.